Steve, I know you're friends with a lot of the guys on the show. You're a fan of the show. You've been on the wrap-up show a million times and stuff. And I thank you for coming in because I know it ain't easy. Uh, I'm sure you're nervous. Uh, but uh, I, I thank you for coming in because I want to understand this mm-hmm. whole thing because, uh, you know, it, it, it does seem like I can't wrap my head around it. Mm-hmm. Um, so Steve got into controversy when it came out. Did you, did you out yourself or did uh, somebody bust you? The Times. The New York Times, yeah. yeah. New York Times figured this mm-hmm. out. Did you figure out how they figured out that you were lying about your experience during 9-11? Did you ever figure out how no, they busted you? No, I don't. I, I, I don't know how they figured it out. I mean, there, there's videos out there, obviously. That's the, the, the sources they cited. But to be but, honest with you, it was just it was a complete out of the blue situation. I got a phone call on a Monday. It had to be either a friend or a family member knew you were making this story up about being in the Twin Towers when they came down. Mm-hmm. Because it's the only way a guy would even bother investigating this, don't you think? Perhaps. I don't know. I mean, I, I it's been, you know, 14 years obviously and and so you know, time is as the stories come out a little bit. You know, there were there were waves of the story. In the beginning, it was sort of something that I I, I said, you know, and then and then I did some podcasts a couple of years later. But then, since then, no one's ever talked about it. Like you said, I was on the show, the league for for the last six years, and no one ever asked me in an interview about it. No one ever asked, you know, if did it was you, true. Have you since this whole thing went down? Do you ever say to yourself why? I mean, do you say like, are you aware why you lied about being in the twin towers? Absolutely, uh, you are aware why. I well, I, I'm becoming more aware as I you know right. as I speak to people. Because sometimes when you make up a story like this, the easy answer is to say, well, I did it for some sort of attention or something. But I mean, the real deep why is some, there's got to be something deeply psychological about this. You want people to love you or, or I, something I mean, like that. To be honest, I, I think it's it's it, when I moved to Los Angeles, uh, it was you know about a month after 9/11, and you know I moved with my girlfriend, and she got a job right away, and she in started making business? friends. No, she was no. A, well, she was in, she got a job as a nanny, and she started right. making friends, and she was making money, and I was hanging out at comedy clubs and. Trying you know, to make it, you tr- tr- trying to just not even make it. Make it was not even a thought in your mind. Just, just fit in, like, right? Survive, make some friends, and just try to start living a life. And it's know, a hard life to break into the life of a comedian, right? What were is. you doing in New York? Were you a, were you a financial guy? No, or something? I was just I was bouncing around doing you know uh, job job. Well, it's temp jobs. I was a recruiter, really, is what I did. Did you always want to be a comedian and uh, be in show business? I went to school for drama, and, right? And then when I graduated, yeah, I wanted. I mean, I did stand up at night, but I was doing like bringer shows where you have to like bring a certain amount of people to to, to perform at night. Was the lying thing about experiences in your life a chronic thing because? I had read somewhere that they even uncovered the school you said you went to. You didn't go to. You went to a different college. Yeah, that was just uh, um, something off my Wikipedia page. I mean, oh. in the article, the New York Times article, it says I'm 37 and I'm 38. It's, right. I mean, there's there's some stuff that's, you know, people can put whatever they want on your Wikipedia So you didn't page. lie about going to, like it was Oneonta? You no, went I to, went to Oneonta, yes. But they say that uh, you were lying and saying you went to Well, Persis. I used to say to SUNY, because people say, you go, where'd you go to SUNY? And then they, they well, which, what, what is that? And I'm like, right. well, there's, you know, many different schools or So whatever. you didn't lie about your school? No. As far no. as you know, the only lie you've ever told was being in well, the Twin Towers. Well, not the only lie, yes. Right, but, but the yes. only big but the whopper. Big one, yeah. yeah. Right. So you, you don't think of yourself as a liar? No, I don't. Do you think of yourself as psychologically... Uh, disturbed? Do you, how do you view yourself after I, doing this? I thing? mean, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Psychologically disturbed. I'm not sure if that's the way to put. It. I mean, I do, I, I do see someone, and I'm starting to figure out more about myself. You know, codependency and ha- I'm wanting people to to like to you. like me and to and to to make people happy. That's a big thing. Steve, do you th- do you think it's like um, you know these women? who um, they'll hurt their child in, mm-hmm. like, well, I forget what they call it, Munchausen, Munchausen, Munchausen yeah. by proxy or something. Is it kind of like, hey, if people feel bad for me, maybe they'll like me. Is that it? I, I don't, maybe, perhaps. I mean, but when I tell you, it, it's, I just, I, it's not like I moved to Los Angeles with this story, with the, with the thought of, like, I'm going to go out and trick everyone out there and tell them this is what it is. It wasn't calculated. I, it wasn't calculated at all. It was as simple as sitting at the comedy store and everyone like, hey, you're from New York? Yeah, yeah. You, you, were you just there? You were, nine, you were around? Yeah, yeah. I was downtown. Yeah, I was there. You worked there? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. And, and if you... It's up, you have, like, 15 seconds, I think. Right. To kind of go... Wait, hold on. Stop. I'm sorry. That's not true. 
Right. And, and if it pass, if you pass that 15 seconds, it's sort of like now it becomes the it becomes story. Becomes a thing where you're like, now I have to be the the guy who's very strange and weird and just said I lied about 9/11. Right. And and Howard, when I tell you, I I truly in all of my heart wish that I had that voice that I feel like I have now that said, hey man, take a breath, relax. People are gonna like you. People are gonna understand who you are when they get to know you. You don't need to lie about that. Take that back. You know, and it's I funny, don't have it. When you see a guy who's as, you know, you're successful, you're on a TV show. How many years has the TV show been on? Seven. Seven years. And you see a guy who's successful, you go, why does he, you know, he keeps saying to himself, why? Why did he need to? But I guess you're going back in time and saying, I felt insecure, and maybe people would somehow feel something for me, these other comedians, and maybe, you know, on America's Got Talent this season, was a kid who had a terrible stuttering uh, problem from an accident mm -hmm. he had. And people, I feel, you know, cut him more of a break because they felt bad for him. Not that he wasn't funny, but, mm -hmm. they, but they also had sympathy for him. Do you think that's what was going on? In other words, hey, now I'm the guy from 9-11, and I've got a little thing going here. I think it might have been like, well, you know, let's you know, because comedians are, are cruel people, especially in the beginning. Yeah. And I kind of was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe now, you know, I, I don't know, maybe people will not be as mean to me or, n or not make as many jokes about me, you know, because they think that this is what, you know, what I've... But how did through. it gain steam? I mean, it's. I mean, it, it. It just. It's sort of like when you tell a couple of open mic comedians, they start to talk to other people, uh -huh. and then at the comedy store, it was like you had open mic comedians, you had you know successful comedians, and then you had stars come in, like right. Paulie Shore was there all the time, and and Dice, and then those guys hear it, and then you know Dice. You they know, notice you now. They kind of, Dice would be like, "Hey, how are you?" You know, and he, you know he started calling me T two, a nickname, and right. and I was like, I, I, I'm like, I don't know now. I I don't know how to ever to ever tell anyone that this is not true. When you saw a story in the news like Brian Williams, when he, uh, you know, it turned out he wasn't anywhere near the, the incidents that he said mm -hmm. he was near, did you kind of say, oh, I understand this? Or do you look at him almost like, why did he do that? I, I, I can't say, I don't, I can't say why did he do that? Because obviously, right. you know, done I mean, that, yeah. I've, I've done that. I yeah. mean, I was very immature and, and, and I don't know what, what, you know, what Brian Williams was thinking, but I do understand how sometimes things can just kind of get away from you for one second. Um, would you, when you, when you first started telling this story, would you lie in bed at night and go, oh fuck, I hope no one ever finds out? Or would you just, was it like sort of not even part of your consciousness that, you know, because you became identified as the Tower 2 guy, the guy, the story was you were in the tower, you came out on the street and you just avoided being killed and you and your wife, your now wife, all avoided being killed in uh, the, at the World Trade Center. And, and the fascinating thing to me about it is, is that your wife went along with it too, right? Uh, yes, she yeah. had to. Yeah. She had no choice. Did she ever say to you, what are we doing? You're not, we weren't in the Twin Towers, or did you guys just ignore talking about it? We talked about it, and she did say, you know, she was like, what, what's going on here? And, she, and I mean, when I tell you, I, I mean, I, I was here, and I, I was downtown, and I did walk across the Brooklyn Bridge, and right. I did witness, you know. As many of us as did. As many of us yeah. did. And, um, and so to me, I... When I took her story in a way, I, because she worked on the 24th floor of right. the financial center, and I just sort of put myself in her position. Right. That, when I told her that, she just, she, you know, she was like, well, why would you do that? I'm like, I, I, it just slipped out. I didn't, I don't know what to do now to, 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 to make it, to fix it. To so make it early go. on, you had that discussion. We did. Yeah. And then we just kind of like, all right, we're, we're two people who have no idea what to do. Let's just put it, let, let's just let it go away. Let's and not tell just anybody go anymore. Away. And it, and how, when I tell you it did for a, a while, you know, after you're there for a year or two, people know more things about you and they, and they, they know who you are as a person and you've made other mistakes and you've done other stupid things and right. other funny things. So it doesn't become, it doesn't define who you are. Did it resurface because you went on Paulie Shore's podcast and a couple of other places and then it became like a bigger thing again because now you were caught in the lie? It I'm sort of resurfaced then because when I did the Paulie Shore stand-up special, he came to my house to interview me. Right. And, um, you know, he, he was one of the people, like I said, that had heard, you know, the mm -hmm. story. So... You know, I, I, I wasn't sure he was going to ask, but I had a feeling that he might. And I, you know, I had a, the thing in the pit of my stomach. And then when he did, I just, I was like, okay. And I just told the story the way that I thought that he may have heard it. And, and then after, I, w I was just like, I have to ask him not to, not to put that in. And I don't know how to do that. And, and that, 
I should I should have demanded that he right. not put that in. I, and and um and and it got more and more involved. Like Mark Marin had you on his podcast and, and like asked six you about months it. later. And and then you were like, oh yeah, I still have dreams of like I'm going to fall, people falling out of the buildings and all that stuff. The the, the lie becomes more elaborate, right? Because well, you try to make it more real. Well, to be honest with you, I I did have horrible dreams. Yeah, I did. And the 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 only thing that I when I read articles afterwards, I, I knew that people had felt the shift in the building. So I knew that that was something that, you know, as Mark asked me questions, I knew that I, 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 that I said, I go, you know what, this is something that. Would you say to yourself, like when this was all going on, I don't even rec like, that's not me. I'm not the yes. guy who lies. I'm not, after I'm not the, a liar. After I did it for the, the, the Scalar Brothers podcast, which was like three months after, this is all within like eight months of each other. Right. I just said, I go, these are all comedians that I'm talking to, people that I think have heard the story, but it doesn't matter who's heard it or what. I don't want to, I'm not doing this anymore. I cannot do this. I have a, a new baby and I, I can't look at my kids and, and my wife and I don't, want, I don't want this to be who I am or to walk around with this anymore. Right. So I told my family and my friends. Did your family, did your parents or anybody? My parents had no idea. My that you had made up this story. None. They had never heard about no, this. No, because they don't listen to podcasts right. and they don't go to my Wikipedia page or any of that. Because had they any relatives said to you no, or friends never. said, hey, wait a second, this never. doesn't add up? No my one, brother, no one challenged you. My brother was in college. Right. Uh, he's a lot younger than me. This was in 2003. And I told him when I went to visit You him. told him that you'd lied. I told him I lied. Yeah. What and did he say? He said, you know what? Look, what... What you did was terrible. You made a terrible mistake, but I know that's not who you are. Right. And I know it's not indicative of you of you as a person and how we were raised. And he's uh my brother's a priest now, and yeah. um, you know we we've uh, we've spoken a lot about this, and that's that's to me the the hurt and the pain and the nervousness that you hear now comes from because I know what I did was terrible, and I know that I hurt a lot of people. Right. People that, you know, that lost people, people that helped people survive, people right. that, and, and those people, those are the people that I, I truly am sorry. That's why I wanted to come on here, because I wanted to talk to you and your audience, because you're personified with New York, and, and your audience is, those are the people that truly, I, I, in my heart, I feel awful, that, yeah. I, that, I, that my dumb mistake created a story that, that just... You know, hit yeah. a wound that did, should never have been touched. Have you talked to anyone since when this story came out that you were lying about the Twin Towers mm -hmm. and, your, your, and, and you being there? Um, I know that you had a big sort of endorsement deal with a, a Buffalo Wings Buffalo or something. Buffalo Wild Wings, right. yeah. They fire you right away, right? So, yeah, pretty. I mean, within a day or two, right. yes. And that's a pretty good financial situation, right? So that hurts your, your pocketbook, of course. The TV show stuck with you, though. Were you mm -hmm. in fear that they might just say, hey, we're not going to work with you anymore? I, I, was in, I mean, we're shooting our last season. We only have a couple episodes left to shoot. And, um, you know, I mean, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't know what, I didn't know what I was going through. I didn't know what was happening, you know? Right. So I didn't know what the ramifications of all this stuff was going to be. Is it weird, after this all comes out, mm -hmm. is it weird then going to the set and doing the show with these people that all assumed you're the Twin Towers guy? Like, what but is that like? It, 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 it was it, it was very nerve-wracking. But to Anybody be honest, say to, anything to you? I mean, I've spoke to a lot of people before, but to be honest, 95% of the people that know me now yeah. had never heard of the story. Right. Because and in a I way, I never went on, I never would go, I would, you know, after 2009, I would never go on, anytime I was ever asked it, I always sidestepped it. I said I was downtown and it was an awful day in New York. And right. I always just tried to move on beyond that and yeah. make that become the narrative and, and step away from the awful lie that I told. Right. So most of the people that know me don't, never heard of this story. You know, I, I call, well, the day that the story broke, I had a call. I emailed my cast members, right, and I told them what was going on, and some of them had no idea that this was even a thing. What they did even, they say to you? Like, did they go, uh, "Hey, uh, you, you know, hey, dude, it's okay, we didn't know," or, or are they like, "Hey, I never want to talk to you again"? Or no, I mean, they, they were they, all, all of them, and I, you know, I can't thank them enough for the support. All of them said, I, we know who you are. We know that this is not indicative of who you are. But when you hang with people now, are you thinking in your head, oh, they're looking at me differently? Like, oh man. Sure. Yeah. It's hard, sure. right? Sure. It, it is. It is. But that's something that I will have to 
live with and 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 grow beyond. And, and what about as a stand-up comedian? Like stand-ups, their whole act is about talking about people's how fucked up they are, how hypocrisy, uh, all this kind of stuff. Can you survive that as a stand-up comic? Uh, can, you, you, you certainly can't joke about this experience because people will just fucking kill you. So how do you handle your career when when this all comes out and you're talking about the jerks in our world and yet you go, oh, fuck, I'm one of those jerks, you know I, what I mean? I mean I, th I think just like that, I, I feel like you have to just say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm an idiot, I made a, mis I made a terrible mistake, but this is, this is not who I am, and I'm going to move on beyond this. And, you know, I, I, my comedy's never been about making fun of other people, and I feel like psychologically now I think about it, I, I just wanted to talk about myself, make right. it that way, in case I ever went at somebody else and they got, you know, upset and they wanted to come back at me, I, I always kind of wanted to be in the back seat just not making not i didn't want to you know when this all came out waves when this all came out did you uh did you get yourself medicating yourself because i like d you didn't have any feelings of suicide or anything no, you could, no, no, no nothing no, like that nothing like that but people did no. worry about that people called i did get incredible advice right away who gave story. you advice my my good friend um Ari just said, you know what? I've had problems before. You got to get off social media. You cannot look at it because right. it's too painful. Twitter for the first two hours was not something, not a place. And to be honest with you, I haven't been on it, Twitter, since till about an hour and a half ago when I said I was going to be on the show. And were people supportive of you coming on or were they like, hey, you better not come on? You today? Be, yeah, right. Yeah, today. Um, I don't know. I, 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 yeah. I mean, people in my life are, you know, but then again, they don't know you. Right. You it, know? It's a matter, though, of... Um, Really, uh, with the social media, if you go on there, you get clobbered. Uh, it, it, you it, get clobbered when you don't do anything. Right. So yeah. it, it, so, so <laughs> yeah. the beating you take on social media, part of you probably says to yourself, I deserve the beating. Let me go take it and read what people are saying. Yep. But on the other hand, no one, no matter how bad you fuck up, can really take the beating that you get on social media, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, I, do you worry about how this is going to affect your career? Because you've... Listen, I'm not going to go into your whole career trajectory, but like most people who are successful and, and, and work in comedy, uh, you've worked really hard. You've put a long time into your craft. You've you, mm -hmm. you got a couple of uh, great breaks and things, but you still have to work hard at it. Absolutely. Um, do you and your wife sit there and discuss, oh, shit, how, now what is the shit storm that falls out? Not immediately, but as you go for further parts and you try to do business with different places, um, are you concerned about all of that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I am. Yeah. I mean, in, in a way, yes, I am. And in, in, in a way that I, I'm not, in, in the sense that I have a lot of support. People, ha you know, comedians and famous comedians and people that I've never met before have said, you know what, man, people make mistakes and, and I'm, you came forward and, and, and I'm glad you did that. Do I'm, you think you would have come forward on your own or would you have just kind of tried to let it die? The, the New I York Times like, busted you. I feel like to me, I... I in a way, I did come forward on my own when I when I told my friends and family six years ago. Right. Hey, I did this stupid thing, and I, I, and when we talked about it, and some people that I worked with, you know, professionally, and and I, I spoke with them, and and they just said, you know, this is not who you are. This is not. We we understand that people make mistakes, and and people that know me have lived with, you know, have known me for the last fifteen years. They yeah. know that that this incident is not indicative of who I am as a person, and you know. But you, you didn't come out publicly. I mean, you had made these public statements. Yes. And you didn't come out publicly and say this was not true until you were outed. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how. I didn't mm -hmm. know what to do. I didn't. Do I call? Uh, you know, a press conference? Do I write a? I, I didn't know what to do. Right. And I, you know, and to be honest with you, when I told some people, especially some friends, you know, I said I have to tell you something. I, you know, this is very important. And then I tell them, and they go, Oh, I, I thought you were like sick or something. And I. And I said, well, you know, I mean, I just, this is, this is a, ter they go, you know what? I, I didn't even think about, it. you know, I didn't, most people don't associate me with 9-11, believe it or not. Right. They really don't. I mean, since mm -hmm. the stories have now come out, obviously they do, but if m people for the last 15 years, it came up in pockets and I would never be like, hey, I'm Steve Renazizi. I'm the, you know, the 9-11 comedian. How it ever would come up in conversation is if I was with someone that I'd been friends with for a long time. They would, you know, they would go, oh, this is Steve. Oh, by the way, you know, he was in the, the World Trade Center or, or you know. From, he... from what you're saying, it sounds to me like it came about when you are in, most insecure. You're a young guy. You're, you're sitting at the comedy club with some really established comedians. And suddenly you need uh, some way to bond with them for them to want to know you. And you tell this rather dramatic story. And I think that's when you go, shit, this is really working for me. Th this is something where I'm more interesting. I don't feel good about myself being interesting on my own. 
this is my way into the club. Yes and no. I mean, I, I don't think it was like, oh, this makes me more interesting. I, I truly believe that, I mean, I can remember how quickly it came, you know, people... People were just like, you, you're in New York. Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I worked down, yeah, I was downtown. You, you, you work there? Yeah, I, wor- yeah, I work there. And then, like I said, it's just, it's in a split second. A split second where you're like, wait, wait, what did I? Do? And then it just starts, to, it gets away from you. Did you, you ever know. start to believe this story and no. start to think like maybe no. I was in the no. Twin Towers? No, because and. T- no, I are never you, did. Are, are you working with a psychiatrist now to sort of help you really unravel this whole mystery? I am. You are. I, I have been for the last couple of years. And is it helping you? Um, yeah, it is helping me because I, there, you know, I, I didn't know what codependency was before a year ago. I didn't know what, you know, narcissism was right. or that well, you know, before that. I, I didn't know a lot about myself, but, you know, when you realize, okay, this is a, this is a stupid mistake that I, that right. I made. And then, well, how do I become better? How do I, you know, I, I'm, I'm. What does the psychiatrist successful? say you should do? Does he say, uh. When you, when you started working with them, this was you started working with them before. It's a female, the, yeah. Uh, or you started working uh-huh. with her before the uh, article came out, right? Mm-hmm. And so you confessed it to her. No, I did not tell her. Oh, you didn't. No, you told her when the story came mm-hmm. out. And did she say to you, uh, "Hey, here's what I think you need to do"? Did they give you a protocol to follow in terms of how to get through something like this? No, no, no. no and not, I mean, not not in the sense of like this is what you this is the step by step that you need to do. Uh, it's just more your fe- my feelings, and then obviously you said before, like yeah. she, my my psychiatrist, I'm sure that I wasn't suicidal or anything right. like that, or the pressure wasn't mounting on me too much. It is a lot of pressure when you get busted in something like this. The thing that I can't figure out is how your wife went along with it. Like like, uh, w- did she start to look at you in a strange way and say, "Wait, you started this thing. Now I have to go along with it." Was this a rub in your marriage for a long time? I think. Um, I- <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't believe so because my wife is, uh, she's... She was loyal. She's incredibly uh, loyal to me and, and to, she's to my family and, you know, she's the light for me. So to, to me, it's what the situation that I put her in um, and then having her just to kind of go along with it, she, you know, it was... I. I don't know. Perhaps we're going to see someone together now. Is your marriage suffering as a result of all of this pressure? No, because she's been very supportive. Right. Because to be honest, she said, you know, she she's obviously someone that's known for a long time, and she knows me, and she knows this is not who I am. So to, I, I feel like in my own personal life beyond this matter, I've I've proven myself to be a good person and to be a you know a good friend, and I just I'm trying to make myself better. I think she sees that. She sees, right. I, you know. It's not just like I told this lie and then that's what it is and it's done. It's I'm trying to improve myself as my career gets better, as everything gets better in my life. I feel like I need to get better. So that's right. why I started to go see someone and start to talk to people and start to try to, you know, make things right. I, that's that's all I kind of want to continue to do. How often do you and your wife talk about this? Like now that it's been some time since mm-hmm. the whole New York Times article came out. Is it a daily discussion, or are you able to put it aside and just go on living life normally, or is this like a constant conversation between the two of you? It's not a constant conversation anymore. I mean, it was the first week or so, and, yeah. and it was very difficult. But you know, we got we have two kids, and we have. Did you have to sit down with the kids and explain How to them? How old are my kids? Yeah. Are six and three. And too young for that. At yeah. Some point you'll have to deal with it. What I, f- what I felt most, what hurt, what was hurting me the most is I was like, I hope that no one takes it out on them. Right. You know, because they just started a new school and, um, you know, I, I, you can, you can yell at me, you can scream at me, you can berate me and I will sit there and I will listen to it. But if anyone ever took something out of my kid, they don't deserve that. Right. You know, no, they didn't do anything wrong. Burden, yeah. They didn't do anything wrong. And, right. uh, for me, for them, you know, uh, th- that's. My imbe- that's what I'm ashamed of. Do I'm people yell at you that I and, and scream at you on the street? Do, I mean, and not that everyone knows no, you, but no. but no. Have people confronted you about this? Have you have you had to go and speak to, let's say, families of people who were actually hurt at 9-11 or no. killed at 9-11? No, but that's no. that's why I'm here today. Right. No, I, yeah, I've been wondering, you know, like, what has your life been like from the time that it was disclosed till now? Did you have gigs that were canceled or... I mean, I was... This week we were supposed to do a panel at Comic-Con uh-huh. at, uh, in New York for the For league. the show, and We've yeah. done it for the last couple of years, but, you know, we just kind of figured, you know, a, an open microphone with 4,000 people being able to ask whatever question they wanted to probably wasn't the best situation. Because it could turn into what? A uh, let, let's uh, bash Steve uh, kind of thing rather about... Maybe 
very well, or right. someone could just get up there and go, you know, just start talking about, you know, how they lost someone and how I'm the worst person in the world, and they would have a justifiable reason to stand there, and I would, I would, I would have to take that, but that's not what that's for. So we. You Does know, this th- feel like a big relief right now off your shoulders? I mean, do you, act, as bad as this is, and coming here on the show, and, you know, this is not why you want to be on the show. You want to be on the show because you want to be funny and all that. That's what you do for a career and celebrate your success. But does this in some way feel like a relief? Or what are you feeling right now? In a sense, I, I, relief is, a, is a, I guess, in a way, because th- it's out now. And I don't have to kind of you know, wait and, and see what's going to happen and be, or, or be very cautious anymore about things. I, the, re- the relief is that I don't have to live with the lie anymore. Right. But, you know, it does come with a lot of baggage and a lot of feelings of, of embarrassment and being ashamed yeah. and, and going through that process of, of you know. And my brother, who's a priest, explained to me, he goes, shame, shame, it's the difference between being ashamed of something and having shame. Shame means that you are a liar and that you cannot break from that path. Right. I'm ashamed of what I did. I'm right. ashamed of telling that lie, that horrible, immature lie. That's what I'm ashamed of. But I don't have shame on me because I know who I am and I know who my parents raised and I know how I'm going to raise my kids. You and feel deep not, down inside you're a good guy. I really do. I, b- yeah. I believe that. I really, I know it's, I don't know how, you, you know, this is not going to make everybody happy. Nothing I say no, today is going to make everyone. No. There are some people who could never forgive Absolutely. You, you know, it's Absolutely. just too painful for them. They don't understand that they don't want to understand And I talked you know to my, what? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, the, what, you know, because most of the time if somebody does this, it's for some financial gain. You know, like they're trying to get in on, you know, whatever settlements mm-hmm. are happening around that uh, horrible tragedy. And so to do do it and and there isn't any there's nothing but a downside here absolutely it's it's boggles the mind yeah i mean i, I like i you know part of the people said that you know you, you profit off of it I, I i never you know i mean i never took a dollar for i never walked right. around uh pete davidson who's a, a comedian is on saturday night live and uh he his father died in in the trade center yeah. and um we spoke that day, um, and I apologized to him. And you know, the thing that he said to me, he's like, "Well, you know, he's like, obviously, he's like, people make mistakes." He goes, "I'm 21, and I'm going to make a ton of mistakes." He's like, "But the one thing I want to make sure is that I'm the 9/11 comedian. You're not the 9/11 comedian." He's like, "I want to make sure that you understand that." Right. So right away, he was like, "It's it, you're going to be okay. It's it's okay. You know, mm-hmm. here is a situation that I can take some pressure off of you." And I was like, "I can't even. I can't. I." I can't even say thank you enough to Pete Davidson for someone to be so young and so understanding of, 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 you know, of people making mistakes to me. I mean, that guy, he's, he's top notch. Cause you expect him to be really super right. angry with Abs- you, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, he lost his father, he right. lost his father, uh, you know, and, and that obviously affected him for the rest of his life, but he understands. And I, even at a young age, because I guess he probably had to grow up so, so quickly that, he, you know, that you know, people make mistakes, and to him to have, for him to have that much empathy for me was true, was touching. Steve, is there anything else in your life that you've lied about that you feel like you still haven't come clean? Like, is there any other? No. There's nothing like no. that. This is the one thing that happened yeah. to you. It's like it's never going to be another call to the New York Times where someone says, "Hey, by the way, here's what, here's something else Steve exaggerated or no. or lied about." It's it's this one thing. Yeah. And I. But I, since you don't know what right. triggered it necessarily, could it happen again? I mean, I, I, look, I don't know. Like you said, I mean, I, I don't know, but there's nothing that, you know, that, that there is left out there to uncover. You know, I'm just, you know, like I said, you know, I, I my sister's a special ed teacher. My brother's a Roman Catholic priest and I tell dick jokes for a living. Right. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how important I, I am. I, even when this was happening, you know, my wife was like, I don't even know if anyone's ever going to, going to notice this, you know? Right. You're not you're not famous. No one knows really who you are. So that's true. I mean, you do kind of say to yourself, uh, "Gee, what I do for a living." It's not even like I tell the news, like Brian Williams or something like that. But yet, you, of course, you do understand people's problem with this. It's just it's hard for us to wrap our minds Absolutely, around creating yes. a story like this. And then we always say to ourselves, because we're human beings, "Why would somebody do it?" Those mm-hmm. are the two big questions. Absolutely. You yeah. know. So. Uh, I think I have a better understanding of it, and uh, 
I'm sure the personal hell that you're in yeah. uh, ain't great either. I mean, uh, you know, you, you want to probably just wash this whole thing away, but... but you know, And you have to wonder, where do you go from here in terms of uh, building a career? That will, you know, time will tell about that. I'm going to get back on stage. I'm mm -hmm. going to still tell jokes. Right. I'm going to do that. Um, you know, that's what I do. That's who I am, and... You know, I, and I hope that people allow me to still continue to act and, and make people laugh. I feel like I do that pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, you know, the, the moving on process is 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 apologizing to the people that I that I. Truly I'm glad hurt. you did that. I'm really glad you came in. I, and especially I, also to my parents. Yeah, Gary, when he called me, he said, "Hey, Steve's thinking of coming in and talking about this." I said, "Yeah." I said, "I'm I'm kind of I'd like to get clear on it. I'd like mm -hmm. to know what's going on with something like this. I think it's sort of a fascinating part of human nature that uh, this kind of thing does go on." And but I haven't spoken about it to anybody else. And I, f the reason I came in here to speak to you, like I said, is because I know how affected you were. I know yeah. that you were on the air. Yeah. I know that you are, um, your audience are are people that were truly affected and, yeah. and those and that's why I want to make sure the guy that writes how I should kill myself and I should get my kids and, and we should burn alive in Iowa behind a computer somewhere I, I apologized I said I was sorry right that guy I don't know anymore to right but to the people that I hurt to to the people that were truly affected that is what you said before do you still live with it when you when you wake up in the middle of the night and you have, you know, you look up and you go, oh, okay, and then you go, oh, it's still real. Like if people are still hurting, people right? We're still hurting, and I don't know how to make that go away. I'm sure there are moments in your day you go, hey, today's going to be a really great day. Oh, that's right, I, I got to go deal with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you're being punished enough with that. I, I mean, I'm sure that's a big punishment when you go all of a sudden go, hey, today's a good day, but oh fuck, I'm the guy who, yep. uh, you know. And I have a great, my, like I said, my family is wonderful. My my parents. I mean, when I told my mother, I was. You know, I, my my publicist said, you know, you might want to call your parents and let them know. I don't know right. how big this is going to get. But oh, that must know. have been an easy call, huh? Well, I was how, on my way to my pa my son's open, his first open school house, and we had to go, and I had to call my parents on the way there because they were in, they, we were in L.A. and they were in New York, and it was too late. And I immediately, you know, I got emotional, and, and my mom just looked at me, and she's like, you are my son. Right. And you, I love you more than anything in this world, and no matter what you've done, I will help you. Wow. And my dad said, I will help you. My dad's a volunteer fireman for over 40 years, and he goes, I don't care if I have to walk you from firehouse to firehouse, and you apologize to each one of them. We'll make it right. Wow. Because you're my son. And to me, I go, you know, I, that, what else can I, you ask how you move on from things like that, you go, okay. And like last night, I was with my parents, and my brother came over for dinner, and we talked about it, and, and you know, we, we, we laughed about other things, and we became a family again. And I go, you know what, as long as this is okay, I'm going to be okay. Right. If I'm never in another commercial again or I'm never in another whatever, I'm going to be okay. Right. No, you got a you got a family that stands behind you. And they, and they're saying all the right things. They're not saying, "Hey, it, they're not sitting and judging you. They're just saying, "Look, you've already judged yourself. We're going to just try and help you make this right." So, what do you think in your stand up? Do you think you'll talk about this experience uh, or would that seem like you're profiting off of it? I don't know. You know, it's I I I've There's nothing funny going on about this. No, it's right. not. It's not. I mean, people talk about. They try to compare it to different things and this and that. It's, you know, it, when you when you boil it down, it's a person that told a lie, and you know, usually that's something that you can. Oh, I made a mistake. Let me make a make a joke about it. But you know, the the, the lie that I told and, and the subject matter is a very, you know, it's a it's a very touchy yeah. subject matter. So I, I don't know. I mean, the only thing that. I, the only thing I can think of is like I'm going to go on stage and just be myself. If somebody wants to talk, you know, bring it. I mean, I, I'm I'm expecting some people that are going to heckle this and that, and you know, I'll, I'll deal with that as it comes. But for me, I just want to to move on beyond it. You know. Well, Steve, I don't know you. Uh, I don't know the show or anything, but I'll tell you what. I think it takes balls to come in here and talk about this, and I think you are asking for people's forgiveness. And uh, I think none of us are perfect. A lot of us have fucked up royally. Uh, not all of us, uh, and, and there's degrees of fucking up. But, look, uh, I don't think you were trying to hurt anybody. I don't think you were trying to, to profit off of this thing. I think this was just someone who felt real lonely and abandoned and, want, for some reason, wanted to just win. Uh, this is my take on mm -hmm. it. Uh, who the hell knows? I'm no psychiatrist. But it seems to me that you needed this in order to feel better about yourself. And, and I think you are doing a, a good job of explaining yourself, if that... Uh, helps you at all. Thank you. And, and uh, I had no uh, uh, feelings that I was never going to watch the show. I was like, I'm still watching the show. 
So <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to watch the show because I, I mean, why start now? Well, you know what I mean? We're, we're on our last <laughs> season. Yeah. You, you'll be confused. Uh, <laughs> you know, look, uh, and Benji thinks you're handsome. So uh, uh, for, for what that's worth ben, as well. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Benji. And uh, and uh, look, I mean, it's a tough situation. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's got to be depressing. That's fucking hell. Well, you know, when you really sit and think about it, because he wasn't constantly telling this, there really was, you know, it, you tried to limit the damage. Yes. And, you know, for several years, it just didn't even exist. I mean, I, like because I said, you weren't yeah. talking about it. I never By the brought way, it up. I never spoke about yeah. it. Uh, the thing that bothered me about Brian Williams. I don't think Brian Williams has ever admitted to himself that he did something wrong. I think today you said, hey, I, I did something really yeah. fucking horrible. Oh. I made up a whole fucking lie. You, you came clean about it. And I think, well, I think when, there's something when healthy my, when about my, that. When the, when the reporter called me, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, a, it was a big week for me. I had a comedy special coming out, and the league was back on. And, and um, Did you speak to me, the reporter? I didn't speak to the reporter. He just called and left me a message on a Monday, and then the, the article came out on Wednesday. But I knew— What was the message? Hey, please get back to me about this. Do you have a comment about what I'm about to write? No. It was, uh, hey, I have um, I am doing an article about your special in the league and 9-11, uh, and, and um, just give me a call back. And, you know, I'm writing an article, so just give me a call back. So I, I knew the tone of it was— and I sent it to my publicist, you know, and then he just, you know, let me know. He's like, this guy's got two different versions of your 9-11 story because he had two different versions because there are because the three podcasts that I told it on was that version. And then since then, I think once or twice people have asked me about it. And all, like I said, all I said was I was downtown and it was a horrible day. I tried to... You, you tried know, to backpedal. Right. So that's yeah. where the different version comes in. So, yeah. and once that happened, I just, I, you know, I... I admitted it, you know, I'm not going to sit there and go, well, it was this, and I You admitted it before the article came out. In other well, words, you wanted to get ahead of the article. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you go to admit that? Well, I told my people, oh, is what I'm saying. Like, I see. The people that I, I wasn't trying to be like, well, how do we make the, this is what. I, there was no cover it's, up. It, it's, it, you it, were busted. No exactly. spin. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's, it, 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 you cannot, there's no other way to put it besides I told a terrible, terrible lie. Right. Had you tried a cover up, that could have been even worse. I don't know. I mean, look, I, maybe people, uh, that's not of my nature to figure out how to get out of this. I when made a mistake, and now I have to when deal When you were under it. that kind of stress, did you get physically ill at all? Did, did, uh, did your body break down? No. I no? mean, I didn't eat. I did, people, right. when I came to work on uh, the following week, the guys were like, you got to eat something. Yeah. You, 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 that's you, you just walk it around like, oh, fuck. Tired and yeah. stuff. But, you know, like you said, you still have kids, and my kids don't know. Right. My kids don't know. They don't know, you know, why daddy's got to be in his office on the phone and why daddy's crying sometimes. And, you know, they don't understand yeah. that. They just go, okay. And, and I try to put on, you Do know, you, you dread go, explaining that to them someday? Because you got it. You got to, mm -hmm. because they'll read about it. But oh. I mean, I dread it, but I also want to, you know, I will use it to go, look, this is what can happen. And I know the thing that, the thing that I want to explain to them is I, you're going to have feelings of being less than and being not up to you know n being not accepted and and you're gonna your instinct is gonna go i have to figure out a way to become accepted right. and i go you have i'm just gonna you have to just have a second to have some sort of self-worth and go I'm, I'm better than this i don't need to do that if i was your kid i'd be like you, you like when you have to discipline one of your kids and you go hey go clean your room you're gonna and and, and they're gonna go hey you lied about 9-11 go yeah. fuck yourself yeah you know I what mean, i mean they're gonna use it it's not just them right yeah people it's, will use it yeah yeah comedians and well listen I'm well i think you know you said yourself you want to be a better person and that's you know also a testament if once you're talking to them and you've done something to really you know make up for it and you can't make up for it, but to to do good things in the world you say look yeah you know if I've, i can use my mistake to make them better yeah, people then yeah. that you know then that's well, I Steve, guess the point yeah. looks like you're trying to work past this i don't dare go to the phones to see if people are how they're feeling because uh, that might don't be like it, you might get the shit beaten out of you <laughs> right. like on twitter and uh, maybe you don't need that right now because i'm sure uh, you were nervous as hell coming in here it's and, been uh yeah i mean yeah. like I, I told steve outside you know i've been here before and and this is never the way i thought i was ever going to walk into right. this building I know. Yeah. Yeah. you're a hero of mine well thank you for saying that and uh, i hope that uh, things work out okay for you and you're able to get past this and uh, and that people are able to give you some forgiveness and uh, and i thank you for coming in and telling us your story cuz you know my inclination would be to just fucking hide in the house and never come out again i thought about that for a while and yeah. to be honest with you there was a big you know my wife's like i don't think you should go on howard 
I don't know if you Is should that do right? that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of people said that, and I just said, you know, I, 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 I you know, I'm a true fan. I've listened for many years, and I go, I, I think that, I think that he will be able to listen to me, and, and I know. I, I know that his audience are the people that I want to say I'm sorry to. Yeah, look, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm looking at the phones. There are people who still want to fucking scream at mm-hmm. you. And, uh, you know, I met back in our office wants to scream at you and, and yell at you. People are angry. I'm angry, too. I mean, I you know, I uh, this is such a horrible, you know, thing that happened in our history. And uh, to lie about it seems so fucking wrong. But at the same point, too, I know you're a human being. And I know that you, you probably did not want to hurt anyone. If anything, you were doing this to be accepted i mean to me it's like yeah exactly that's what it was it was just a little you know it wasn't like i was on a cruise somewhere i wasn't in new york it was just you know a little step forward all right well steve thanks for coming in and explaining this to us uh this is uh uh, Steve, steve wants you to uh to know that he is truly sorry i think that's the message here and uh this is steve ranazizi 